So let's jump right in. This is the definition of a batch norm. Okay, so ignore all of that. That's just an import. So to the question about, you know, what's going to happen if we are training or not? Well, a very simple way to find out whether we are training or not is to find out whether autograd is turned on. Because I'm only going to use autograd during training, so therefore checking whether autograd is on in the network, well, tells me whether we are training or not. So if we are training, if we're not training, then what I'm doing is I'm just, you know, subtracting the moving mean and, you know, rescaling by the moving variance. And I'll, and afterwards we actually perform the appropriate updates here. So after processing a couple of observations on the test set, things are pretty much stable. So now let's assume we're not training. Then one good way of finding out whether we are using a convolution or not is to check the, the shape of x. Because if we are using a convnet, well then I'll have, you know, channel by channel. So I have channel by width by height. That's for a 2D convolution. Whereas if I have just an MLP, then I just have, you know, number of features. So therefore, I'll either have two or four dimensions, because the one extra dimension is from the batch, right, from the mini batch, to have mini batch times number of hidden neurons for an MLP, or mini batch times channels times width times height. So that's why we are checking for two or four. So now, if we have two dimensions, then I just go and compute the mean and the variance. And I rescale. That's the batch norm for a multilayer perceptron. Now, if we have a convolution, then, well, I need to compute now the mean while preserving all the other axes, namely 0, 2, and 3. And I keep the rest. So basically before that, we just had axis 0. Now we have axis 0, 2, and 3. And then I just go and, you know, normalize appropriately, right? So that's x minus mean divided by, you know, the square root of variance plus epsilon. So it's the same expression as what we had here. But just that it's not the moving average, but the other one. And then in the end, we output, you know, gamma times x plus beta, and that's it. Right, and then we just output, you know, y, so the up, this, and the moving mean and the moving variance, because, well, we want to store that somewhere. Okay. Everybody cool with that? Good. So let's move on, because once we have that, everything else is easy. So now we need to turn this into a layer definition. Okay. Sorry, somebody is urgently trying to reach me, and I really <laughs> don't have time. <laughs> um, so the well, basically initialization of the batch norm layer. The first thing is it checks, you know, what the number of dimensions is. And then, you know, it allocates the corresponding scale parameter and allocates parameters for mean and variance. So remember when Mu covered how to define blocks and layers and parameters, this is exactly what we needed. Right. So now we are going to put that to good use. And then you need to introduce a forward function. This forward function now just does nothing else but just apply the batch norm. So the first thing that it does is it makes sure that the data gets to the right device. 
Right, that's all it is. Just copies the parameters to wherever the data sits. Now, and you know, that'll happen once, and that's it. Because it now reassigns it, right? And then, well, it just applies the batch norm. That's it. And that's all we need in order to implement the batch norm from scratch. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So let's see. This now. Oh, because I didn't actually execute batch norm before. Okay. Now we can do it. So this is Lunette, but with batch norm. So what I'm basically doing is before the activation, so before the sigmoid or relu or whatever, I'm just adding batch norms. Without that, it would be a completely generic Lynette, but now it's a Lynette with batch norms. Okay. So I can do that. Then I can train it. It's going to take a few seconds, and we'll see how it does. It's fairly accurate, so even already to get started with, yep. Given that it's such a simple network, it works quite well. Actually, let's compare, for the heck of it, what it looks like if I didn't have batch norm. So what I'm going to do is, just going to add um, yeah, maybe I need to just quickly quit out, or actually let me zoom out. So I'm going to remove all the batch norms. Do that. And now all I have to do is I just change wherever I had Lynette. Lynette. I change now to Lynette. Glue on trainer. Lynette. And there we go. So remember before that we had an accuracy of you know 0.869. Now let's in and it took about 3.6 seconds. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so it runs faster because it doesn't invoke the batch norm. That's to some extent because we invoked the we you know ran the batch norm by hand. And it works a lot worse. Okay, so batch norm is good for you, right. but of course, I mean you wouldn't want to go and implement it from scratch like so. Let's, uh, okay, well, let's see. Of course, you can't really look at the parameters very well because we just reinitialized the network, so you just have to trust me that this is what you would have gotten if we had looked at the parameters before. Um, but yeah, I mean they're just corresponding offsets. Now let's actually do this entire thing in Gluon. And the only difference is that now rather than invoking batch norm, I just invoke NN batch norm. And I don't actually need to feed it any other parameters because it's smart enough to figure out from the context what the corresponding sizes are. So that requires a little bit more code, and, but it doesn't actually change anything conceptually. And then let's run it. 
And so remember before that, without batch norm, the code ran at about 2.3 seconds per loop. Now it takes around 2.4 seconds. So it's, you know, maybe about 5% slower. Before that, it was about 50% slower. You can see that it gives us the same accuracy as what we implemented by hand, just that the overhead was, is a lot tinier. So the overhead is about one-tenth of the overhead by, that you would have had by using Python. It's good enough for, for experiments, but now you can do things much more easily. And this brings us to the end of the batch norm.